Hey everybody, I got Lily here. Um, this one makes me very sad. Normally she gets just like a little trim up, but today she is extremely matted. Um, she is just very, very matted all over. I'm gonna put the dryer on her and you'll be able to see all her mats. She's gonna have to get shaved down today. Um, just makes me very, very sad. But I'm gonna put this dryer on. And any of the little clumps that you see, that is the matting that I'm talking about. I'm gonna flip. See all that? That's all matte. All that on her belly, on her legs, all the way down her legs, on her chest. Like her chest is really bad. Um, so yeah, she's she's pretty tight. Um, I hate the fact that I have to shave her down because she's got such little skinny legs. Um, so she's going to look like she's walking on stilts. I'm going to see if I can try to get a five through her. Now, I don't know if that is possible with how tight some of these knots are. But I really don't want to do a seven or anything low, especially since she's a blonde dog. Um, I don't want her getting sunburned, so I at least want to leave some kind of hair on her. Uh, I mean, it's a good thing that she's getting clipped down because it is summer. You know, but it just sucks. I don't like shaving dogs down. I truly do not like shaving dogs down. I like that more fluffier clip. I'd rather do a two-tone. If I could do a two comb, I'd do a two comb all day because it's short, it's still a little fluff. But unfortunately, she needs to get this done so we can get her coat back to where it was. Uh, if you ever bathe your dog at home, make sure you fully dry it, especially uh, when they come out of a lake. If you take them in a lake or they have a pool, you're going to want to dry them because you're going to end up getting mats like this. I don't know if that was the case, um, but they'll start to rub their body all over the place. Uh, even her tail is completely matted. Like it is just one big old mat. Um, and if you don't brush it or blow dry it, they rub it and then the hair between kind of just rolls around and that's what causes that, that matting. So, I don't even want to have to shave her tail. I don't want to just... This really pains me. It really does. I know there are some women out there that just were like, oh, just hate easy brew, shave it down. And yet, it can... Matted dogs can be easy, especially when you have to do a shave down. Sometimes they're not easy because there's sometimes some of them are just so darn tight. You see that? That's hanging off. Um, but I don't like shaving dogs down. I truly do not. Uh, I mean, some dogs do look good shaved. I mean, I shave my dog down sometimes. But that's only because by the time I get home, I'm a little only grimming up the top. I'm so tuckered out and boot. Uh, I try to bring him in. I used to be able to bring him in all the time, but right now we don't have a car. It's kind of car feeling with my mother in law. So. And normally he would be here for daycare, so it would be a lot easier for me to do it here because I have all my tools. But by the time I get home, you know, I ain't got time, especially with two four-year-olds. And then the other kids, I don't know. This is just one big old mouth. I think you have to shave this down, especially because I don't want it to look like a rat tail. But, um, Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, unfortunately, to get the coat back to how it was. I know, baby, I'm sorry. I know this does not feel very, very nice. It's almost off, we're almost at the end. My mama's gonna be a little wrecking on me. I'm probably going to yell at the 
I know she knows you're mad at it. But still, when you have a, such a fluffy dog and they're mad and you have to cut them down, it really is a shock. Um, it really, really is. And I showed all this tail. This is the tail. This is basically a dreadlock that came off of her tail. Now her tail can breathe. I got a little rat tail going on, but I mean it could be worse. It could be shaved a lot shorter. But it is what it is. So I'm just trying to go over this with a five, and maybe I can back brush it. Maybe do a four. I don't know. We shall see. Where are coming? That's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Oh, these legs are super tight, man. Yeah. I might have to do a seven here. Gosh. stuff like this, stuff that I don't want to do, it really makes me crazy. I mean, I know it's what we have to do. I just don't want to do it. But, you know, I gotta do what's best for the pet. You know? Sometimes it's just not about the vanity, it's about the sanity of the dog. Because one, this one, this does not feel good. This does not feel good at all. It's tight, it pinches, it hurts. Um, if I were to sit and brush this out, she'd have brush burn all over the place. Which would then probably then turn into a hot spot. And nobody wants a hot spot, so you're definitely not doing that. I think her legs are going to have to be a seven. I can't get this five through safely. And if I can't get it through safely, uh, then I have to do the seven because if I got to keep sitting there and doing this, it's just going to cause irritation to the skin. And then the irritation will end up turning that into a hot spot. So it sucks sometimes. You gotta do stuff you don't wanna do, but you know, you gotta think, well, yes, it's just hair, it will grow back. It's gonna grow back, it's okay. You know, we're just getting a fresh start all over. It is hair, it will grow back. This sucks. Look at that. So I went down to my uh, number seven competition series. I love this series by wall. Uh, it is really, really great for your matted dogs. It really cuts through it like that. I know baby girl. I'm so sorry though. Don't worry. Your hair will go back and we'll get you back to being all party, okay? I oh, know. The dog's just going to get cut. Um, I hate to say that, but sometimes the coat is just so tight and twined with the skin, especially if they have really thin skin. 
Um, it's just sadly going to happen. Sometimes it's just not avoidable. Her armpits are really tight. Save the ear, I can. Now the bottom of the ear, there's no way I can. It's it's mad. But the hair that is above it, I can save that. So what I'm going to do is pull all the hair up that I can, and I'm going to shave the mad part. And then the hair that's not mad will lay over and kind of hide it. And I'm doing this with a ten on my barbera or barbara barbera. Yeah, I got a tongue twister from today. Around the ear. You see now the whole ear doesn't need to be shaved because I just shaved that one ear and I can just brush that. We are going to do the same thing to the other side. Check this part. Yep. So 
that part right there, that's a mat. So we're going to fade that part out. Now the bottoms of the ears tend to mat up. Um, if they're scratching at their ears, if they're rubbing their ears on the ground, um, if their ears are getting in the water bowl, um, you're definitely going to want to have your groomer uh, trim those. Now, normally I don't shave all the way down the nose. Um, some people just really do not like that. Um, normally I'll just trim in front. Now she does have some mats down here in her hoo-ha land. And we're just going to shave them all out with this number 10. Because this is a sensitive area and we don't want to be pulling on this area. I'm going to shave this all the way up to where the belly button is because that's where the mask starts. Who are you working on, Melissa? Really cold blue. Okay. It's probably going to be in a different spot because I started cleaning. Oh, that's fine. I don't care. I didn't think about it. I was like, oh, okay. I'll put her wherever you tell me to put her. That's done. I'm going to show you the part of the butt part. Do this with a 10. Make sure you're going over um, when you're doing this. You don't want to um, shave the actual anus because you can nick it. And then if you nick it, then they're going to have issues when they go proggy. And then they're either going to scoot, lick, um, and then that's going to cause irritation to it from them licking and scooting. And then when they go and make a, a bowel movement, it's going to make it worse. So make sure to just kind of go around it. If you don't want to go over it, you can just kind of go around it like that. Um, kind of like a T. Now when you're doing your pads, I do mine with a 40. Uh, in the summertime, I won't go all the way inside of their pads because um, summertime the concrete and cement are very, very hot um, and they don't really have protection on their feet. So if they go out walking a lot, um, they go for long walks, so you want to have some kind of air left there to give them some kind of protection so that they're not burning their pads because their feet can get burned. Um, I mean, if you have little dog booties during the summertime, if your dog's okay with wearing them and walking with them, it might look funny, but it'll save their feet. It really, really will. I've seen so many dogs get, get burned. Come on her head. I'm going to go over her head with a bar comb. I'm probably going to do it with a zero comb, which is a five-eighths of an inch. I a lot of, this feels really good on the dry skin right now. Okay. She does have some knots right here in her face. I'm going to scissor this out because there's no way at all I would be able to get this out. recommend having your dog get put on a schedule every, I say four to eight weeks. Uh, it really depends on your dog's coat, your dog's breed, uh, and especially the type of haircut that you want. Now, if it's a, a short haircut, um, you can, might be able to go longer, which, like I said, depends on how fast they grow. If they're not a fast grower, you can probably go a little bit longer than eight weeks, but every dog is different. You gotta keep that in mind. You can always do baths and tidies in between if you don't want to do a full cut, which is perfectly fine. Um, we're gonna do this. We'll do a one cup. A one cup is a half inch. It is the orange. Now I am gonna do this reverse on the top of the head. 
which will probably technically bring it down to a two cone, which is a three eighths of an inch. I absolutely love a two cone, let me tell you. I'd rather do a two cone than a seven or a five. Because it's short, but it's still kind of fluff. I'll leave a little fluff almost. But it gives it a nice little teddy bear look. But it's not like shaved. It's not like, oh my god, you shaved my dog, that is so good. That's why I like it so much. I my husband's head today. I always say he's kind of, he reminds me of a terrier. Because he's got wiry hair. This hair gives me hair splinters too. You can call him something when I get call him. Don't not right here. helping guide this through. Uh, there we go. Because it wasn't so close to where I had to like cut it out. So I was kind of just trying to help it guide through. It, it, it doesn't it didn't hurt her. Because if I thought it would hurt her, I would not be that. I'm not gonna put any dog in harm's way. It's something I don't want to do. I don't think this is cutting anymore. Melissa over there. Uh, I also have a TikTok as well. As well. Um, I try to do transitions of the before and afters of some of my dogs uh, when I can't do videos of them. And my phone can only hold so much. It only has so much space. And I try to do my videos at like a really good quality because you know, I don't want the quality to kind of crap. If you want, you can check me out there. You can follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Tiki Taki. If you're not following me on the YouTubes, feel free to hit that subscribe um, and hit that notification bell so whenever I, I uh, upload a video, you'll be the second to know because I'm going to be the first to know because I, I, made, the, I, made, the, I made the video. Yeah. Anyway. <coughs> Now we did all that fun stuff. She is mat free. See how skinny her legs look? I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. But it is only temporary. Her hair grows like a weed, so I know in like maybe about oh, two weeks, her hair will be grown back enough to wear it look nice. Now I'm going back over this with a four blade. Still kind of looks short to be honest. I mean, it is what it is, unfortunately. But she is not free. She will feel, I know she feels 
a ton better already. I already know that. I already know that.
know, I don't know if it's because they're, they're lighter. I don't know. But I've just noticed that their skin is a little bit more sensitive. PDA Follow the jawline when I'm setting my face in. fabulous things with it 
and whether you like it or not, or if you don't like it, it's going to grow back. It's going to grow back. Because that's what hair does. You shave it, it comes back. You like the haircut, guess what? It's still going to come back. You still won't have to cut that hair to get it how you like it. I mean, it sucks, but... I wish there was a, a way you could uh, keep the hair how you like it, but that, I mean, that would kind of put groomers and hairdressers out of business. Well, no, I don't think technically it would because, you know, there's tons of people and tons of dogs and tons of cats. And all the new ones basically don't need a haircut. So. I miss a little pot in your hoo ha. Thank you, baby girl. No, no, this is like a sweet girl. This is like a sweet. I know, I think the pretty kisses. You know, do you fall by them? Do you feel better? Mm -hmm. I know, I know you feel better, don't you? I know you feel better, don't you? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we're just going to scissor everything up. She ain't got much to scissor except for her face. And, you know, we just got to turn on her feet. And then she's... She's good to go home. outside because when you're walking you can see the hairs uh, that stick up and the same thing for when the owner is walking from behind you can see that hair when they're walking now generally I mean most clients most people aren't going to notice the hairs sticking out here and there um, because they don't have a room on but some people are very uh, detail-oriented to where they do notice that stuff, so that's why I say do that. I mean, you want, your, you want the haircut to be the best that you can get it to be. And by the end of the groom, you want to say, okay, that's a really good groom. I would, I would pay for that. If by the end of the groom, you're not saying, I would pay for that, then you're not done grooming your dog. Because if you don't want to pay for it, how do you think your own, how do you think the owner's going to feel? Do you think they're going to want to pay for it? No. I can tell you this, they're not. And they're most likely going to complain. Um, your client, your fur babies, they are, they're like, a free billboard. Okay? If the dog looks like shit, excuse my French, the word's gonna get out. Whether, you know, they leave a review or, you know, when they're out walking the dog, some people, when their dog looks funky, sometimes they don't even take their dog outside because they're just out there there's the haircut. They wait for the hair to kind of grow out before they take them back on walks. Uh, I know that's a little absurd, but I. I know a few people that have actually done that. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that your haircut is the best because if the haircut looks like crap, I'm going to tell you that's going to spread like wildfire. And it only takes one person. It only takes one person to have a bad room done by you to where, you know, they tell one person, and that person tells another, and, you know, when they're asking, oh, where do you get the dog room? Now, if your dog's doing, you know, if your dog looks great, then that's another reason why you want to make sure you, your dogs look good. Oh, well, that dog looks good. I see so-and-so walking down the street the other day. I want to get my dog room by that room. That's how you build up your business. That's how you build up your clientele. So... 
don't do what some salons do. I know PetSmart does it a lot because, you know, the, I think it's just a corporate thing to where they're just like, pop them in, pop them out. You, you can't always do quantity over quality. You get what you pay for. If you're going, now I'm not saying all PetSmart people, all PetSmart members are bad. I know a lot of uh, groomers that are in PetSmart that are absolutely fabulous groomers. Um, some of them even compete. And they're like, they are absolutely amazing. So, but I know PetSmart also tries to get their, um, especially their winter groomers, um, you know, they're more about quality. They have a, uh, you get a certain set of dogs that you have to get done within a certain amount of time before your next set of dogs come in. That can be very overwhelming to some people too. So, you know, they tend to rush it to try and get their dog done so they don't feel so overwhelmed. So, you know, it's all about quality. If you want to go to a place that is, you don't want to go to a place because of the price, uh, well, then you're going to get what you pay for. Actually, it's no different than when you go and get your hair done. When you go get your hair done, you want you pay you pay a lot of money for your hair. It's the same thing for the dog. Um, you know, people go to school for this. They train for it. Um, they constantly, you know, keep it. Well, some people keep up on their toes. They go to uh, grooming expos and go to. Um, classes or they do classes online or they just, you know, if they can't afford that, like me, uh, though I am looking into um, doing some courses online. One of the groomers that was here was saying that they were starting to do courses online. <clears throat> um, so I might actually be doing some of that this year. But, you know, if you can't do that, there are tons of videos on YouTube. Uh, and a lot of the times, I will look up on YouTube on my downtime at home and I will pull up some groomers, some really good name, well named groomers. Um, and you can watch them do like little things. They'll show you how to do your feet, they'll show you how to do a face or an ear, or they'll just show you little little tricks on, you know, how to deal with an aggressive dog or, or how to do cat grooming. You know, it's little things like that that separate those groomers from others. You definitely have to have patience and you have to have the want to definitely be grooming. I can tell you that. I've been doing this for since 2006, 2007? 2000, 2005. 2005 is when I started and I graduated just before 2006 in October. I had to do a hundred dollars back then. It was a, you had to groom a hundred dollars in total. You had to do seven technicals, which is um, seven breed specific dogs. You got to do one of whatever choice you wanted to do. So you had to do like a teddy bear cut. Um, you had to do a Shih Tzu, groom a Shih Tzu. You had to groom uh, Maltese. You know the. You had to do every kind of coat there was. You had to do your springers. You had to do your your schnauzers. You had to do your copper spaniels. Anything that has a brief specific cut, that was my AKC, you had to do it. And then you had to do a questionnaire to make sure you understood how to do it and why you had to do it and all that fun stuff. I don't know if they do that now. Um, right, I got trained on it, but I don't think that they do. You have to send in my photos and stuff. Uh, the academy I want to, but uh, you know, <clears throat> just because you think you know it all, I tell you this, you don't. I still learn stuff every day. I mean, I've been in the game for a hot minute. I mean, I'm, I'm not the best groomer, but you know, I think I'm pretty all right. I think I do a pretty good job. I mean, I got a lot of clients that like my rooms. A lot of y'all that watch my videos, and I thank y'all. I really, really do from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much that means to me. Um, I mean, there are some people that 
don't like what I do. And, you know, you can't please everybody, unfortunately, but you know, all you can do is try to do the best that you can do and continue to learn and adapt. Um, I mean, this is a tough industry. You have to have tough skin. I say that, but I, I sometimes still get offended. But I mean, you have, you really have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I mainly, I don't mainly get offended by other groomers. It's mainly by people that are not groomers um, that have not groomed at all in their entire life, uh, and they just, they, they don't have any idea, and it just really upsets me sometimes. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You can't please everybody. All I can do is do what I know and just try to improve. You know what I mean? That's all you can do. Can't worry about the the small stuff. You get one line from one line following. So do what you want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to groom. I love groom. I mean, I get to play with the fur babies. I mean, some of them you don't get to play with. Some of them. Some of them want to eat you. But you know, the, those ones, I actually love those ones a lot more. Um, I really, really do. I love those ones a lot more. Because they need more love than maybe I know you do. Know. But, you know, because in a way they're kind of damaged. They've had some kind of trauma that got them to that point. So where they're they're either really aggressive out of fear, which most of them are really just doing it out of fear. I mean, there are some that are really aggressive just because they're, they're turds and they just want to bite and they're just not trained. I mean, there are some of those. Um, but, you know, most of the time they just need a groomer um, to take some time on them, you know, build a bond with them. And that's the side that some people don't get to see or understand, you know. Sometimes they just see the dog scratching all over the place. Oh, you're being bad. No, there's, there's a lot that goes into the grooms. Uh, there's a lot that goes into the background of that dog and why it's acting the way that it's, why, the way that it's acting, you know, why it's thrashing and stuff like that. All you can do is try to do your best with the dog and try to bond with it. Um, you know, I don't even know why I'm going to this whatever I'm talking about. I don't even know what starting me on that. But you know, just do what you can. You know, you gotta bond with the dog, have your patience. Oh my god, is that a prayer? Oh my god, it's like Christmas! Oh, Debbie's gonna be ecstatic. You don't have no idea how many times we have to sit there and push that darn button. Debbie's gonna be about something to do with technology. Yes. <laughs> you have no idea how many times me and her curse that thing out. Because we're like, get us our dish! And it don't want to it don't want to come out. She was so mad today. So mad. Um I don't know if it's gonna have someone install it or what, so follow up with Doug on that. Okay, well I just brought it back here. Well thank you. You're oh my god, I'm so happy. It's the little things. We got a printer, y'all. We got a printer. For the past, I don't know, a few months, our printer, we've had a new printer. Um, and it just pretty much wastes a lot of ink. You'll have to sit there and hit the little explanation point, and you'll be sitting there doing this, and it don't want to print, so we're just like cursing at it, like, come on, give me my damn paper. But, you know. I'm gonna take a picture of it instead of Miss Debbie. Um, but most of the time when we print it, it prints up other stuff. And you know, when you print stuff, it'll print up a little paper that says, oh, your printer's working fine. And then it shows you all the colors and stuff. And it's like, I don't want that paper. 
You're wasting someone's ink, and ink is not cheap. Ink is not cheap, man. I mean, it wasn't cheap then, and it's definitely not cheap now, especially with the inflation going on right now. But hey, eggs have gone down quite a bit. They have gone down quite a bit. So I'm excited about that. I don't know if that got to do with it with print, but. Now this side might look a little funky because she had that mat that I had to cut out. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it to where I can, you can see the little increase right there. Uh, so I gotta try and see if I can round out this piece here and then bring out that piece. I always put my dog's heads up in a color so down. Um, and then I always brush it up because when you brush it up and they shake their head, I don't know why I just shake my head. Um, when they shake their head, that's kind of where their hair is going to lay. So I'm just trying to get this all the same length. Oh my God, I'm so excited about that printer. No, I'm just have no idea. I gotta see what kind of printer is. I think it has like a one of those little pictures on it where you can see it. I think it's a fancy printer. The printer we have is like from like 1990s. It's a really old printer, bro. But now we won't be wasting so much paper or ink. Oh, I'm so freaking excited, y'all. It really is the little things. It's the little things that make life a lot easier. I know it's sad that I'm just really excited. I've just been going on about this printer. See, I'm very easily pleased. <laughs> what can I say? All I ask for is a clean house, a roof over my head, and my bills are paid. And food in my belly and my kids' belly. You know, everyone's taken care of. That's all I care about. And then, of course, my, my fur babies. I care about my fur babies. You do know. I was really hoping um, to try and compete this year in one of the uh, rescue rodeos down in Georgia. But I'm not gonna be able to do that this year. I don't have a car no more. Uh, I'm looking into getting another one, but I gotta finish doing more, uh, some other stuff before I go ahead and get another one. Because the car's like dead dead, and it's, it's, it's a piece of trash. It was literally a lemon when I bought it. I'm just talking on the ear off. But hey, I guess I can say I'm not good. I mean, I'm talking to myself, but I'm not really talking to myself, am I? I'm talking to you! The world is just like, shut up, lady! I know. because it will blend it in a lot better. I mean, you can still see this little dent here in the face, um, but it's not nearly as bad. If I keep scissoring it, then it's gonna get worse. So, and I don't want it to get worse. I just want it to kind of be somewhat even enough with the other side. This time. Right. Now, the ears. We are just going to brush these suckers down. Now remember, I shaved underneath the part. I shaved underneath that part. So if you ever have a mat under there and you have hair that's on top that you can save, don't shave the whole ear. Don't do that. Just shave underneath and leave the hair 
above it. Just, just do that. That might be your mama calling. Check them out, WiffySense.com, WiffySense uh, Facebook. They do giveaways on the holidays. I'm telling you. You can use it in your car. You can use it in your house. You can use it in your closet if you got a stinky closet. If you got cats and you can't get stay in that litter, spray it around there. It, it'll mask the scent. I'm telling you, I got eight cats. I know. Um, but it's really good, and you don't need a lot. Just a spritz or two, and it lasts for a few weeks. Uh, so go check them out. Uh, and this is the finished cut, y'all. Nice little thing. So, I mean, even though she had to get shaved down, I mean, it doesn't look too, too bad. It don't look too, too bad. It looked pretty good. I love it. I love it. I love you. I love you. Well, thank you guys for watching another episode of me groom another doll. Aw, thank you. I love you. Say bye. Say bye, Lily. She says bye. She says she's done with me. She said bye, girl. See you later. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all later. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. It's just so you get notified whenever I upload a video. And also, don't forget to check out my Facebook page and my TikTok. I mix and Melissa. I post photos every day of the dogs that I don't can't do videos on um, because I don't have enough room on my phone. Um, <clears throat> so you can check me out there, and then you can also check out my TikToks. Uh, I do a kind of like a before and after transition. So, oh, look at that printer, y'all. Oh, look at that printer. That's a nice printer. Anyway. Bye, y'all.